Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Conversations on Critical Operations. And today we're talking to Mikhail Koloskov. He is the Technology Manager Digital Assets at IPCOS. Good morning, Mikhail. Good morning, Nick. And we're also talking to Chris Feltz. He is a Senior Strategic Product Manager at OSIsoft. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Nick. So, Mikhail, tell us about IPCOS. So, IPCOS uh, is an uh, international company. We are providing services to maximize performance of the assets for the uh, oil and gas, chemicals, and petrochemical industries. Great. And what kind of things have you been doing with uh, OSIsoft customers? Well, a lot of our customers are um, um, using a lot of uh, different OSIsoft technologies and being a partner for many years of OSIsoft, we are helping to unlock the potential of their uh, software, the OSI soft software. In particular, we provide a digital oil field solution, which uh, maximize performance of the oil fields and also reduce the cost and uh, improve the forecasting. And uh, a lot of these technologies rely on uh, data which uh, being hosted in uh, in the Pi data infrastructure, in the Pi system. In particular, we've been uh, working for many years with the traditional Pi data archive, asset framework, especially asset analytics as well, and also provide the visualization using the Pi vision. Um, many of the, our solutions, especially digital oil solution, are based on the Pi development uh, technologies, Pi Web API, etc. Okay. And if I understand correctly, you're, um, one of the technologies you've used, in addition to uh, analysis framework and Pi Vision, is you're using Edge Data Store. What are you doing with that? Oh yeah, exactly. So we do have a lot of remote assets um, within our client base of uh, international and national oil and gas operators. And uh, Edge Data Store provides fantastic opportunity to uh, automate those assets, for instance, beam pumps or for remote wells or well-tested units, mobile well-test units, um, where there is no possibility to install the traditional, let's say, Pi server. So Edge Data Store provides the data collection, uh, persistence of the data, and the ability to transfer this data uh, smoothly into the uh, Pi system. Uh, in fact, uh, it's also uh, hardware agnostic, so we could use Edge Data Store on a small devices like Linux Edge uh, uh, gateways or small Windows Edge gateways. Microsoft Windows Edge Gateways. So that allows us to get more data and as a result to improve efficiency of the operators um, uh, operations and also to provide more asset visibility. Okay, great. So now Chris, Edge Data Store is relatively new uh, and you're the guy when it comes to Edge Data Store. Can you describe what it is? Yeah, thanks Nick. So Edge Data Store is, is Mikhail briefly described it's a, a new product released by OSI Soft in the in the spring of, of 2020. So we're just now rolling out uh, for what we expect to be a long life. So Edge Data Store, as I think of it, it's it's really made of five software components that are closely knit that work together to deliver kind of capabilities at the edge. So if you think about what the, what are these five kind of capabilities in the first release of Edge Data Store, it starts with data access. You know, OSI Soft has a long history of data collection in real time. So that is a, is a component of the Edge Data Store. So the ability to get data from industrial data sources. In the first release of EDS, we target what, what are right now the two most common uh, Edge Data Store, and um, excuse me, the two most common industrial data sources at the Edge, and that's OPC UA and Modbus Ethernet. In addition to that, you know, OSI Soft again has a long history of custom application development, you know, think about what, what IPCOS and what Mikhail has, has described. So we, OSI Soft also provides an OMF endpoint for the Edge Data Store for folks to write custom applications to get data into the Edge Data Store. So first component is getting data in. Second component, kind of the guts of the Edge Data Store is that local data storage. So the Edge Data Store has a way to persist data that's collected either by its standard industrial um, interfaces or its, its custom OMF interface. That data is stored locally for the amount of data storage that you have capable on the device. 
like Mikhail said, typically edge data store is going to run on these low resource, um, lightweight, low cost, typically Linux devices, but sometimes Windows, where there's typically, you know, small disk drives, if there's even a disk drive at all. So edge data store will use as much storage as, as is available on the device, but we don't expect edge data store to be that system of record. We do expect edge data store, that data collected, to be forwarded up to a Pi server, as in Mikhail's case that he described, and also to OSI Soft Cloud Services. So that's the third component, the ability to, to inherently send that data when the time is right to a Pi server or to OSI Soft Cloud Services. The fourth component of Edge Data Store is an is a application development platform. Again, as Mikhail mentioned, one of the value adds that IPCOS brings to Edge Data Store is that ability to do edge analytics on their customers remote in this in his case oil and gas assets so the ability to read and write data from the edge data store through its its application service is another component of edge data store and then rounding it off you know we do expect edge data store to run in lots of remote places on lots of remote assets you know think tens hundreds or thousands of assets so the ability to programmatically manage edge data store install configure is a key component in that fifth component of the edge data store. So data ingress, uh, data storage, data access, data egress, and uh, data management are the, the core components of the edge data store. Okay, great. And if you can just come give us the context. Where, what inspired edge data store? Where did this come from? Yeah, so edge data store, you think about, as, as Mikhail mentioned, their use of the, the Pi system. So the Pi system is, is, is a great solution for these in-plant, you know, industrial operator companies where they want to run lots of data collection against lots of big data sources and, and typically within the walls of the plant. But as we started to see with the advent of the Internet of Things and specifically the industrial Internet of Things, the ability for customers to start to instrument assets where it wasn't technically or economically feasible before. So in lots of these scenarios, the Pi server and, and, and OSI soft data collection technologies just isn't a good fit. One, because they rely on a Windows operating system. In a lot of these remote cases, you know, customers don't like the care and feeding of the Windows operating system, especially for assets out in the field. What they want to use is, is robust, ruggedized, typically Linux-based computers to keep the cost down, but then also to meet the, the rugged environments. So we learned that you know customers want to do things. The Pi server and our traditional data collection technologies, Pi interfaces and Pi connectors, just weren't a good fit from the you know the Windows reliance and then the, just the management of the software. So that was you know that combined with this idea that we still need to get data collection from these assets. We still need to locally persist the data for use by local operations people or to provide data to local applications. You know, the, all those things kind of rolled into this idea of a driver for an edge data store that runs on low-powered, lightweight, typically Linux devices, but to honor our Windows legacy, we also want to support Windows on these devices um, that complements the Pi system and Pi interfaces and Pi connectors. What does EDS do for you that the other software that we have available like AF and all that, what, what does it do for you that the other you can't do with the rest of our software? I think uh, I would describe a few features that are crucial for us, uh, which Edge Data Store provides us. First, we could um, collect the data from the industrial sensors, uh, sen uh, sensors on the well site, for instance. So we could use Modbus or PC UA protocol to collect the raw data, uh, which is will be collected on the very small, like Raspberry Pi or um, any Edge um, gateway device, low, low powerful, or maybe uh, with a one CPU, etc. Uh, this is one thing. The second thing is that, which is very important, we could persist this data, we could uh, store this data locally, and we could get this data uh, available for the local uh, smart mobile worker, which visits the, the well or which visits the assets to get access to this data and to use this data for some diagnostics for analytics. Finally, what is very important is that it provides very smooth integration with the traditional Pi server and Pi data infrastructure. So, with a matter of no cost, we could easily integrate the same data, the same raw, connect, uh, raw 
calculated data or raw gathered data with a uh, Pi system. So I think those th three features are the key features for us. Very cool, very cool. So now, Chris, does w is Edge Data Store based on the Pi system? I mean, will it replace any existing uh, Pi system components? So with Edge Data Store, again, as I mentioned, we looked at these scenarios where customers wanted to provide new data collection on new assets where uh, they haven't been able to collect that data before, typically outside the plant environment, but, but not necessarily always outside the plant environment. And so we looked at, you know, is the Pi server a good fit? For those of you that have been o around OSIsoft a long time, you know, OSIsoft, the Pi system grew up first on a, on a Vax based platform that migrated to a Unix based platform. And then from the mid 90s, uh, Pi server has been based on the w a Windows operating system. So we first looked at, you know, can we get back to our Unix roots, you know, and meet one of the requirements of Edge Data Store, which was support for the Linux operating system. And what we found is, this is just not a good fit. You know, we built specifically built the Pi system to be that enterprise level software, to be that robust, hardened, you know, piece of your, your plant enterprise. And so we, with Edge Data Store, uh, we started from scratch, you know, we looked at the the capabilities that OSIsoft had at the time, and at the time, going back a couple of years ago, we had already started work on what we now call OSIsoft Cloud Services, which includes a, a couple of capabilities like data storage, like data access, like data ingress. And so with Edge Data Store, it's not based on any Pi system technology, but it is based on several components of our OSIsoft Cloud Services namely that it shares the same storage engine as OSIsoft Cloud Services. It shares the same data access API as OSIsoft Cloud Services, as well as the same custom data ingress surface, which we call OSIsoft Message Format, as OSIsoft Cloud Services. And the reason we did that is, is OSIsoft Cloud Services is based on the most current and modern development technologies that are uh, available today. So although Edge Data Store is very interoperable with the Pi system, it doesn't share any of the same DNA, if you will, as the Pi system, but instead it shares some DNA with OSIsoft Cloud Services. So what that gives us is, is really nice technical harmony between our, our new Edge system, the Edge Data Store, and our cloud-based system, OSIsoft Cloud Services, as well as interoperability with those on-premise Pi systems. Great, great. So, um, Mikhail, did you try anything else before you implemented this using Edge Data Store? Yes, yes, it did. We tried the uh, custom development to develop the uh, data collection and uh, data persistency ourselves for the edge devices. Uh, but that was quite time-consuming exercise. That worked at the end, but it would be requiring a lot of support effort to maintain that and also to integrated with OSI soft and also to enhance that in terms of the features and new releases etc so that's why we've been very happy to hear from OSI soft that they are developing edge data store so and we've um, working with Chris Fels from the, the very early days and we're happy to um, use edge data store as the standard data collection for the edge devices for the remote assets Okay, great. Well, we can't have a uh, an interview these days without asking how this affects or helps people in the days of the COVID nineteen pandemic. Chris, you want to describe what's uh, what's going on with that? Yeah, you know, it's a, a unfortunate situation. You know, the Edge Data Store is is really meant to help customers deal with these remote scenarios, and we do expect one of the outcomes, or you know, of of this COVID nineteen pandemic is customers learning to do more remotely than they were able to do before. So this idea of having to send operators out to these remote sites to, to gather information, you know, we're figuring out we, we can solve these problems without having to send people to places or without having people permanently stationed in places. So the Edge Data Store and our other Edge technologies that OSISOF is working on today is a good fit for that because we do allow that ability to collect that data remotely, provide access to that data, and then when the time is right, send that data up to those Pi systems into OSI Soft Cloud Services. 
Great, great. Okay, well, Mikhail, you know what? Let me uh, th let me just ask you: Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you wanted to talk about today? And actually, while you're thinking about that, I just wanted to make the observation, Chris. You're talking about in the days of the pandemic. One of the, I think, one of the biggest ironies that we've been hearing about is a lot of people are taking these. You know, a lot of people are uh, maybe they've got half of the engineers are, are at home. They're not at the plant every day, right? And so they've got all these hobby projects they've been wanting to do for years and years with real time data that they're jumping on now because they, they're not going to the plant every day. So I think that's one of the fascinating unintended consequences is people are doing these really advanced projects now in a way that they couldn't do before because it was just fighting fires day to day. Mm -hmm. So just absolutely fascinating. But anyway, uh, so yeah, is there anything that we forgot to talk about that you'd want to talk about about IPCOS, uh, Mikhail? Well, I would say that uh, uh, HData Store provides us ability to automate the assets with a uh, quite low cost compared to the traditional methods. So that's why that opens a huge potential for the uh, small remote assets like low producing beam pumps to have uh, asset visibility and to, to get the data from those assets. So, Because many operators for many years were not able to automate those uh, uh, remote assets due to the high cost associated with the traditional automators. Now with the uh, industrial IoT of things, that becomes possible and thanks to EDS that also becomes uh, available as part of the standard by data infrastructure extended to the age. Okay. I want to ask you a lightning round of questions. So uh, not particularly serious, but interesting questions no, nonetheless. You know, we in operations, folks that work in operations, it's a unique viewpoint that not a lot of people know about. And you don't usually hear about these these types of things. But, you know, tell me, Mikhail, are you, are you normally located on site somewhere? Or do you generally work out of a, a research center or, a, you know, a, a, resource, a centralized resource center? Uh, our engineers are typically located in the centralized resource centers, providing the, let's say, niche specialization for and supporting and complement the, the teams of the engineering who are already uh, working for the uh, international oil, gas and petrochemical operations. Uh, however, uh, those are people are typically in close connect with the field staff. So. Okay, good, good. But you, but you still own steel tip shoes, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. So do you, like so many engineers, do you have a piece of broken gear that you sit on your desk as a memento, something, you know, a blasted out valve or a, a burned circuit board? Do you, do, you, do you keep something like that nearby as a memento? Not at the moment, actually. No, I don't no, think. No, not at the moment. Okay. Chris, you got anything like that around? Uh, in my in my past, I worked for a company that <laughs> built uh, electrical power stations, and for a long time, I had a, a piece of a baffle from a steam blow valve that uh, disintegrated as part of the uh, steam blow process before turning the plant over. So I don't have it currently, but yeah, that is one uh, one souvenir that I kept for a long time uh, as a as a memento <laughs> of that uh, field job I did many years what's, ago. What's going on with that? I mean, every every engineer I know has got something. <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> really nice. anyway uh, so uh, uh, Mikhail what's the first computer have you used uh, let me think it was x86 actually it was so that's uh, oh, IBM okay. PC x86 PC right IBM PC Very cool. yeah, yeah, yeah it was uh, US based yes yes okay okay well again thank you so much for joining us was there anything that uh, I forgot to ask you about that uh, you'd like to tell us about it because uh, what we see is that a lot of uh, companies uh, and our clients are uh, looking into the IT technology these days and trying to 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 try to feed that into the remote assets. And uh, indeed, a lot of the technologies that are available on the market they do provide uh, ability to persist the data of the age to to do some basic calculations there, to store the data. But uh, most of the time, there is no an, a very easy access to the data, and most of the time, it's not smoothly integrated into the traditional uh, historians that are placed. The real-time historians is already in this infrastructure. So, I think I would emphasize um, the let's say the companies or operators to look close into that. That 
this aspect of the integration of the real-time, age real-time data sources into the traditional data historians, this is something not to overlook. And that's why I think age data store for us as a system integrator for the international oil and the industry industries is very important that it provides this integration without any headache and without any additional cost on the top. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen, both for joining me today. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, Dick. Right. And again, I'm Nick DeRazio. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.